playing the Radical Latino Show. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's Radical. Oh, Latino is taking you to another level. Yeah. What up, my people? Welcome back to another episode of the Radical Latino Show. It's your host, the Radical Latino, aka number 25 on all Latin podcasts, aka Mr. Unsuable for the eighth week running. What is going on? I hope everybody is enjoying their week. I hope everybody's enjoying their day. This is episode one. 13 what is popping i hope everybody is you know ah damn Woo. got a little burps i hope everybody's doing well on their uh you know going through this whole pandemic around the nation i know everybody's uh either opening up or some some states didn't even go through it so shout out to you guys you like you guys is super lucky um so just uh shout out to y'all you know shout out to all the new listeners shout out to all the new fans that i'm getting also um next week i'm gonna start a new segment on the podcast reading listeners emails because uh, and giving advice you know because i do get um emails from listeners and i pretty much answer them on the spot or whenever I, I uh, get the email and instead of answering them, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm gonna, definitely still going to answer them, but also I'm going to read them on the spot. So if you guys want my email, it's all on the detail section of the podcast or description down below. If you got some relationship advice, ask me, if you got some racial advice, ask me. If you got advice and anything that you're trying to understand, ask me. I'm always down to talk, listen, and all of that good stuff, right? All right. Um, couple of updates. Did you guys see my interview with Tina or Christina? Who saw that interview? My interview with Christina happened a couple of days ago. You know, um, it was actually pretty cool. I, um, I enjoyed it. We actually had a very great discussion. Um, a lot of people joined in. We, uh, we basically talked about, um, we basically talked about, uh, you know, just, just interviewed uh, They We interviewed, you know, she interviewed me and uh, we basically just talked about whatever, you know, she interviewed me about, you know what I'm saying? And it was, it was, uh, you know, a wonderful discussion, a, a good back and forth. You know, so uh, shout out to her. Um, there was also a Q&A at the end. And, you know, some of my haters are going to be like, oh, man, you got owned by the, the questions. Listen, the the segment was called questions and answers, not questions and proof. You know, uh, I didn't. It's not a debate. You don't go in there prepared when you talk about questions and answers. You know, when people want proof on a certain thing is usually because they already got their mindset and they don't want to you know uh let go of what they already got their mindset on so even if you prove them wrong they will still like ignore it and be like no no i was wrong i was right i was right you know what i'm saying so um but anyway it was a great interview if you guys want to see it check that out on her channel so far I, I think it's close to um a thousand four hundred you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Tina for that. Also, I'm also going to be doing a couple of more interviews. You know, just stay tuned on that. Also, I'm going to be doing an Ecuadorian video. I'm going to be touching on the beautiful parts of Ecuador and also parts of the some parts of the culture that some people might might know, might not know. So, you know, shout out to me with that. You know, uh, just stay tuned with that now last week's episode 112 i inter interviewed paola aka afro latinx right 
and she was actually she was actually pretty cool um i'm surprised a lot of people liked the interview and the reason why i'm saying i'm surprised is because um you know she gets a lot of hate you know what i'm saying she gets a lot of hate um so la princess says muy hermosa i love her hair yeah shout out to shout out to paola i, lo- I like her hair too um a couple of troll comments to from jason lopez this dude over here call me a con artist okay i guess i guess um comic apocalypse says even as a conservative i enjoy this channel i don't always um 100 agree but your insights are usually at the very least interesting shout out to comic apocalypse shout out to him johnny mill says Radical Latino, great interview. Shout out to Paola Gracia Garcia, aka Afro Latin X. Shout out to Johnny Mills. Um, Moy says, How does Radical uh, suck up to Tariq Nasheed? Even if he did, of course, you will have a problem with it. Yeah, I keep on telling people, listen, I don't I don't know why people keep on thinking that I suck up to Tariq Nasheed. I, I don't know. Um Keith Jackson says Great interview, my brother. Keep up the good work. And yes, you are my brother, mi gente. <laughs> Shout out to my brother, Keith Jackson. Shout out to you. And Pamela says, if people don't know what white supremacy is or how it, how to define it, they need to read a dictionary. No way in hell people should be confused about what white supremacy is. Paola is amazing, but I do respectfully disagree on a few things. For one, the uh, bio, the biopic term, I live in. Uh, blah 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 blah. So uh, basically, she was just talking about uh, white supremacy. Yeah, I, I really, I, I, I tend not to even talk to people when they go like, "How does white supremacy affect me?" All right, I'm done. You know, there's no conversation to be had. You know what I'm saying? There's literally no conversation to be had. I'm, I am, I am done. You know what I'm saying? I am done. Like, fuck out of here. I don't waste my time. And decolonize Alexis 94 says, I would have more connections with a brown and black teacher than a white teacher. I have nothing against white teachers. It's just me. Well, that's true. I actually had more, uh, a, more connection and i had a better experience when my teachers were not uh, were non-white for the most part for the most part you know for the most part i did so um you know shout out to to everybody commenting you know um if i didn't read your comment i'm sorry uh also remember if you want your comments read next week go to the to the youtube the um youtube chat my youtube channel on the episode that this is and i will read your comment you know what i'm saying now going to my first topic apple oh man so apple had their big iphone event oh jesus christ and i'm telling you right now i was on twitter basically doing like live uh broadcast feeds and updates and stuff they announced the HomePod Mini, yay, right? About goddamn time. Only $99, right? Shit. They announced um, the iPhone Mini, uh, iPhone 12 Mini, then iPhone 12, and iPhone Pro and Pro Max, right? So there's four phones, four lineups, and it's it's pretty much insane. Like, Jesus, they got four. And it's 5G through across the whole board. Um, my th- my thoughts on this is, I like the iPhones. Um, I'm definitely gonna get the iPhone, iPhone 12 Pro Max, obviously, because I always have to OD and get the biggest shit. You know, um, I am gonna get it. Um, I like everything that that came with it. Um, the only differentiating part, differentiating part is that the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the camera, it's completely redone and it's like, like super expert. You know what I'm saying? 
It has uh, Adobe uh, sound support um, embedded in, and th you can tell that they took their time with the pro lineup than with the regular just 12. You know, um, don't get me wrong. Overall, the pros and the non pros are still going to enjoy this phone. You know, it's just up to each to own each his own. You know what I'm saying? So, um, also with the I, um, the iHome mini, it's $99. Now this is something I noticed on the Apple website. They're not sneaky. I know what they're doing on the Apple website on Apple's website. The home pod was 199 because that shit is not selling. Nobody's liking the shit. The shit is not selling. So it was 199. The home pod mini gets announced. You go back to the website. The shit is back up to 299. Like what the fuck? Like, come on now. Wasn't the whole point was to reduce uh, a price because y'all wasn't selling. You know what I'm saying? Put it back at 199. Come on guys. You know, but, um, I really liked, um, the presentation. I really liked what they had to offer. Um, found out what the little thing on the side of the phone was. Is the same um same little indentation that the iPad Pros have, which I got actually I got by the way, it's for an Apple Pencil, but they said it's actually for 5G millimeter waves. So I guess it's for millimeter waves, you know. So anyway, uh, riddle on that solved. You know what I'm saying? Riddle on that solved. Anyway, so moving on to my next topic. Umar Johnson, Jesus Christ. So Umar Johnson's in the news right now because he went to the God cast with Lord Jamar and Rod Digger and he started bugging the fuck out. He started to actually look fucking guilty. You know what I'm saying? He started to actually look guilty. Uh, Lord Jamar was asking him questions about the school. But before I start, let me just say something. I actually do have the right to even talk or say something because I donated to the school. All right. I donated $50 to the school and that's it. That's all he got from me was 50 bucks. I'm not going to donate again from something that I'm not seeing coming to fruition. You know what I'm saying? So I donated to the school so I could talk. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I haven't gotten answers, but at least I could talk. You know what I'm saying? So just mess me with the, oh, you can't talk about black issue. Get the fuck out of here. I donated so I could talk. You know what I'm saying so. Umar Johnson starts bugging the fuck out, saying, "I don't need no help. I could do this shit on my own. I got all this other help from everybody. I got experts and engineers and all this other shit." I'm like, "Yo, if you really got all of that, don't you think the school would have been open?" The fuck you talking about? You don't need no help, homie. You've been, listen, you've been getting exposed left and right from regular people, man. Your taxes on your place have not been, uh, paid. The taxes of, uh, of the, of the abandoned school trap house, that shit hasn't been paid. He's backed up in taxes. The, the fact that none of the, none of the restoration has been done. Come on now. And by the way, he lied talking about he was uh, getting donations for six years. No, you literally he started getting donations, I believe from 2010 or 2011, something like that, because somebody pulled up a Facebook post or something like that. He started getting donations from then 2011, 2010 or 2011 around there from then it's been damn near about to be 10 years, 10, nine years. Come on now. Are you serious? And Lord Jamar over here is talking about, Hey, listen, somebody that did it from the ground up, didn't get all the money that you did, but did it from the ground up. What's up, brother? What was, what's going on? I don't need no help. I don't need to talk to nobody. What the fuck? That's ego talk right there, bro. That's ego talk. See, check this out. I wasn't going to speak on Omar Johnson, even though I got scammed out of $50. I wasn't going to speak on it because 
I didn't want to just, you know, talk about another black man, especially somebody that's doing something positive. You know, I had, uh, I think I had black princess contact me a while back. Shout out to black princess. Contact me a while back saying, yo, we're going to do this Umar video, whatever I want you on. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I declined because I don't want to go and attack another, you know, another black man that's doing something positive for the community. Even if he's scamming, I wasn't giving all the proof. You know what I'm saying? Now, with everything that I've been looking at and researching and all this other crazy shit, now, hands down, hands fucking down. This dude is scamming. Did we forget what Tariq Nasheed said? Did we really forget? You know what I'm saying? Mind you, they were close. So how he know about the scam? You know what I'm saying? On top of that, I know for, I think Tariq, I don't know if Tariq did, but Tariq said, I believe that's what he said in that rank. He didn't donate because he knew from jump and kind of makes Tariq a little suspect. You knew this motherfucker was scamming from the jump and you couldn't warn nobody? Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. But anyway, he, he was looking wild sus in that, in that interview, man. Wild suspect, bro. Wild suspect. And there's a lot of things that didn't add up. He keeps on saying that he raised 700 something thousand. That's that same number he keeps on talking about since 2016. And but yeah, he kept it keeps on getting donations. So how come you haven't updated your the, the recent numbers on how much you got from donations, huh? Come on now. All of this shit is not adding up, bro. This is I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I want to literally give Umar Johnson the benefit of the fucking doubt. I think that this is the benefit of the doubt. I really think he wanted to open up a school, but it got too much for him. It got too much for him. He doesn't know how to fucking do it. His ego is getting in the way. He's the most requested. He's the most requested scammer. You know what I'm saying? His ego got in the way, I think. And he wanted to fucking, I don't know, have fucking uh, space programs and, and you know, nature documentary research and, you know, um, digging under the, the earth to the, to the, to the magma, uh, you know, universities on top, on top of dumb shit like that, you know, uh, sat satellite, satellite, uh, 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 portions on the school. He was talking some crazy dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? He was talking some real crazy dumb shit. And I really think he, act to, this is the benefit of the doubt. I really think either, either this is two things that happen. And I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He really wants to open up a school and it got too much for him. It got too much for him. And out of desperation to shut everybody up, he bought some abandoned buildings and he just can't keep up. He just can't keep up with the facade of he can't keep up with the facade of, you know, Hey, I really don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think. That's what I think happened. And that's giving him the benefit of the doubt or, or this dude was never going to open up a goddamn school. You know what I'm saying? He's one of these conscious coons. He was never going to open up a goddamn school. And he just stole money, just stole money, stole money, stole money. People were questioning, so he has to deliver at least something. So he goes and gets a bunch of abandoned buildings that he's never going to fix up and keep on saying, well, we're going to uh, get the money to fix up to fix so he could keep on that scam going. And then later on, either something's going to happen to the building and he's going to say the white supremacist is stopping me from opening up the school, people. And either the city's going to take it back or whatever the case is. He's going to find an excuse. Either two of the things he was for real about it, but he didn't know how to really uh, do it right. Or he really was scamming from the beginning and he's just playing everything by ear because some of the shit, actually a lot of the shit doesn't add up. A lot of the shit does not add up. Mind you, I donated to this man $50 back in the day, like back, 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 back. I, 
man, that shit was so long ago. I think that was like 2013, 2012, 2013, something, uh, somewhere around there. You know what I'm saying? Back, 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 back. I know that for a fact that I donated to that man. And I have the right to talk. Definitely I got the right to talk because I got the right to criticize. I spent fucking money. I want to see where my investment is going. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, he tried to do the this little Jedi mind trick where he goes and says, well, when you go to Foot Locker, you don't tell them where the money is going. Stop. Stop that shit, man. Stop the guilt trip. Stop that dumb shit, bro. Stop it. The fact that we go to a white store and we actually get a product is way different from what the fuck you're doing. The product is already done, shipped, and given to us. Uh, your shit is just keeps on promise. Your shit just promises, promises, promises. So that's how it, it's different. You know what I'm saying? That's how it's different. That's how it's different. So miss me, miss me, miss me, miss me with that whole, yo, um, I, I don't, I don't know if he's still, listen, if you are a Umar Johnson follower still to this day and you believe in that school, then I really gotta, then donate to my school. All right. Donate to my school. Um, I'm having it, opening it up in the Bronx. It's called Academy for um, young Bronx women getting pregnant at the age of 16. That's what the name of the school is. And we're going to uh, teach VCR repair. We're going to teach gun repair. We're going to teach hookah repair. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to get our people right. All right. It's called Academy for young girls in the Bronx getting pregnant at 16. That's the name of it. <laughs> That's the name of it. All right. What are you doing? You just sitting down. That's all you're doing. You're just sitting down. Pick up the phone and call Academy for Young Girls Getting Pregnant at 16 right now. That's all you're doing is sitting down. You could have just got up and, and, and called. That's it. That's how easy it is. And get your, the, get your degree in four hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Donate to my school, all right? Donate to my school. I'm starting off. If you want to donate, I'm starting off with uh, four tiers. I'm fo starting off with the tin, uh, the tin foil plan. That's of uh, twenty-five dollars. Uh, I got the cardboard plan. That's fifty dollars. I got the EBT plan. All right, that's seventy-five. And for a hundred dollars, yo, for a hundred dollars, you get the hot sandwich plan. What? Donate to my school, son. But we'll open that shit up in the Bronx. It's probably gonna be in the basement in the back of 178. I don't don't worry about it. Listen, don't question it, okay? Question the white man that you buy shoes from. Don't question me. Fuck out of here. <laughs> nah, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Um, I'm gonna put that shit together though. No, no, no. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Um, all right. Going back. Um, going to our next topic right now. Going to our next topic, Bill Burr. Oh shit, Bill Burr. Did you guys hear that Bill Burr monologue on SNL? There's a reason why. There's a reason why he is going viral. There's a reason why he's going viral. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm gonna let you guys hear a small clip but if for youtube if it gets cut off if it gets cut off is because you know the, it got censored so if you want to listen to the whole full thing go to the podcast you know what i'm saying but if you listen if if it gets cut off you know what i'm saying that's because i had to re-upload this whole thing all over again you know but on the podcast side you can listen to the whole thing but here's a small clip Ahead. Let's let's talk uh, let's talk white women here, shall we? Let's talk white women. White women, you're amazing, amazing your accomplishments over the last few years. I got to tell you, the way white women somehow hijack the woke movement, 
Generals around the world should be analyzing this. <laughs> Just to refresh your memory, the woke movement was supposed to be about people of color, not getting opportunities, the at-bats that they deserved, finally making that happen. And it was about that for about eight seconds. <laughs> and then somehow, white women swung their Gucci-booted feet <laughs> over the fence of oppression <laughs> and stuck themselves at the front of the line. I don't know how they did it. I've never heard so much complaining in my life from white women. My language is so hard eh, with my SUV and my heated seats. You have no idea what it's like to be me. <laughs> Trash and white guys, the nerve. Where's the camera? The nerve of you white women. Let me, I, listen, I don't want to speak ill on my bitches here, okay? I don't, but let's, let's go back in history here, okay? You guys stood by us toxic white males through centuries of our crimes against humanity. You rolled around in the blood muddy, and occasionally when you wanted to sneak off and hook up with the black dude, if you got caught, you said it wasn't consensual. Yeah, that's what you did. That's what you did. So why don't you shut up, sit down next to me, and take your talking to. <laughs> So, the month of June is Gay Pride Month. That's a little long, don't you think? <laughs> For a group of people that were never enslaved. <laughs> how, did, how did they get all of June? <laughs> Dude, black people were actually enslaved. They get February. <laughs> they get 28 days of overcast weather. Sun goes down at four in the afternoon. Everybody's shivering. Nobody wants to go on the parade. Look, yeah. How about you hook them up with July? These are equator people. Give them the sun for 31 days. This gay black people, they could celebrate from June 1st, June 31st, 30, 61 days of celebrating. All right, that's all my time. We got a great show for you guys, everybody. <laughs> yo, yo, I, shout, out, shout out to Bill Burr, man. He's really funny. Shout out to him. Um, He's actually, he's very hilarious. So shout out to him. And this is the reason why people are getting mad. He's absolutely right. 100% right. Absolutely right. Um, Not about, he's getting less hay about the whole gay comment thing. That was actually kind of funny. You know, these are equator people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's actually kind of funny. But let, um, he's really, really getting the real big hate for white women. And that's basically proven his point. White women did infiltrate the feminist woke movement. It's 100%, not the feminist, but the woke movement. 100% accurate. 100% accurate. Let's go all the way back to the feminist movement. The feminist movement never, not once, ever thought about black women whatsoever. This is something we have to be real about. The white feminist movement never thought about black women whatsoever. The white women that were fighting for oppression and all that other stuff, they were fighting against the white male elites, white male patriarchy system. That's who they were fighting for because at that time, black men wasn't telling their women what to do. They weren't even, you know what I'm saying? They, black women and black men were both part of that same system. Whatever happened inside the house, you know, their, their traditional roles or, or, or whatever, but that's basically it. On the white household, white girl, this white woman, Becky, she was getting beat up, uh, abused, you know, belittled, not thinking that she would amount to nothing. You know, pretty much a bunch of dumb sexist bullshit, right? You know, the only jobs they could get is, you know, uh, visual type of jobs like, you know, stewardess, uh, receptionist, secretary, and that's basically it. You know what I'm saying? So the feminist movement saw this and said, yo, we gotta, you know, rise up and do something about it. 
they were getting some movement done. But remember, this is during the 60s. This is during the 60s where the Black Panthers were running. You know, where they were running shit. Well, while the Million Man March was happening, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and all these other people, white women said, you know what? We're oppressed too. Because my white husband is beating me up. But yet when they're going to march and stuff like that, the cops didn't sick dogs on them. They did it to, to black folks. You know what I'm saying? If white, if a group of white women were in those marches with black folks, the police would be like, excuse me, miss, move out the way. We got to get the Negroes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. And he's 100% right on that. He put a jokey joke spin to it, but it's 100% accurate. You know what I'm saying? So the white women, they were getting some traction, but not that much. As every movement has to has to do with oppression, they said, you know what? Let's use black folks because obviously you can never question their oppression. So it goes from white women to all women. And they ended up convincing and tricking some of the black women of those times to pick up arms adopt their ideology and for all women to get rights. You know what I'm saying? All women. And it was at the cost of black women because even till this day, white women get all the benefits of those civil rights bills. Black women barely gets anything. White women gets paid more than black women. Let's keep it real. And I'm not trying to compare white women's pay with uh, a white man's pay. I'm not doing this. I'm just trying to s show you how there is a divide. You know, look how how many if all we're talking about all women, look how how many videos of Karens have come out. And who's who's in the receiving end of that backlash? Black women. You know, the feminist movement to this day comes out when they're going against a black man having fake tears and, and fake, um, you know, sympathy for a victim that is a black woman. But when a black woman is the victim by a white man, there's no, not even a peep. They stay shut. Look at all the, look what happened to Sandra Bland. White woman didn't come out in, uh, in the droves and go against that. Look at the video. There was a, a video a long time ago of an officer literally beating up a black woman. No, uh, no groups of white women came out and said anything about it. You know what I'm saying? Breonna Taylor. I haven't seen no feminist white women groups coming out about it. I'm seeing Antifa, but that's something else. I'm saying Black Lives Matter, but the majority of Black Lives Matter are white folks. I'm talking about white women specifically. Let's keep it real. When a black man is being accused of victimizing, it doesn't even matter if a black or white woman, they will come out. Gloria Allred will be right there, front and center. But when there's a white man being accused, they go MIA, crickets. You don't hear shit. That tells you something. That tells you something that this whole thing was a farce from the beginning. And you could go back in time with that. Now, the fact that Bill Burr is actually getting heat for this tells you a lot. It tells you that white women know exactly what their stance is. They know exactly where their stance is. They weren't getting oppressed, beat up, having dogs sick on them, hung, and all this other dumb shit. Let's keep it real. They didn't have experiments done on them. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. White women benefit from those birth control pills off of black and Latin people sacrificing their bodies. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. 
there's hundreds of black women getting sterilized in jail and thousands more getting sterilized in those ICE detention centers. You don't hear shit from the feminist movement. What's up? I thought this was supposed to be all for women. What's up? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? We got to keep it real. We have to keep it real. This is, this is for loneliness, buffoonery, bullshit. And the reason why he's get, uh, Bill Burr's getting backlash is because he called out their bullshit. And the thing is, hit dogs will holler. Wouldn't they? Hit dogs will holler. You know what I'm saying? Because if that's not the case, it's very simple for one of those white women to point out what a group of white women did in face of oppression. Pussy hats, get the fuck out of here. You don't see a whole group of women wearing pussy hats for those sterilization, those ice detention centers. You don't see a whole group of women wearing pussy hats for those black women getting sterilized in jail constantly. You don't see a whole group of women wearing pussy hats when black women's rights are being violated. You don't see that. You don't see that at all. Nowhere. Nowhere. And you know what I'm saying? You, you will probably have one or two white women do that, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the feminist movement, the collective feminist movement. You don't see that at all. You don't. So the fact that these, you know, these women are getting mad at Bill Burr is because he's saying the truth. Let's keep it real. He is saying the truth. You know what I'm saying? Even though they hate it. You feel me? Even though they hate it, fuck it. He's saying the truth. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, moving on to my next topic. Oh my God, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. What the fuck? Joe Biden. Oh shit. Oh my God. So I swear, I feel like the Democratic Party is doing shit on purpose to lose. They ele- they picked Kamala Harris as their VP, the top cop that basically violated black people's rights left and right. Uh, Joe Biden didn't see a no, he didn't see an issue with that. Okay. Um. And th- he he's having comments like. If you're not, uh, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Weird old dumbass comments like that. He said no to reparations. So, in order to be cool or be down with the youth, <laughs> with the young youth, um, they thought it was a smart idea to hire battle rappers to basically battle rap or rap out or just or, or rap it um their plan on why they should vote and mind you is they picked both of the best spitters DNA and Charlie Clip shout out to both of them could freestyle their ass off both of them can you know they got word placement scheme Listen, they are nice. They're professionals. But this shit was cringy as fuck. This shit was cringy as fuck. Was the bag worth it, man? Come on. Was the bag worth it? Um, I'm going to let you guys listen to a couple of bars. He, 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 here it goes. You know why I'm calling you. You have to vote. You know why I don't vote? Because as a black man, I just feel like there's no hope. Our president telling people to go back to China, taking the coronavirus as a joke. And that's the part that frightened me. When you choose a president, it's supposed to be a knockout. Then why this situation doesn't entice me? 
If you got the answers to get me out this dark path, my brother, enlighten me. We always telling each other to stay woke. That's why this time we gotta use our voice and you have to vote. The facts should show. Biden has a plan for African Americans. We not dealing with your average Joe. I see the way you looking right now. You know exactly where I'm gonna go with this. For four years we had Trump in office and we made the most of it. But we finally got somebody that could be in office that could give us a chance to have home ownership. I'm talking to all of you. $640 billion over the course of 10 years so we could finally get housing that's affordable. Look at him now, I got him stuck. With Biden and Harris plan, we gotta trust because we can't say we support Obamacare but rock with Trump. So Harris and Biden is gonna help with black ownership, huh? Okay, maybe it's true. But what about the black colleges and all the funding for the HBCUs? Is Biden gonna follow in Obama's footsteps and go all out with healthcare? Or is he going to laugh at us like our president now while our people struggle on welfare? You see, I did my research, which is exactly why I could rebuttal that. Biden and Harris planning to put $70 billion to the HBCU. We're not just talking about a couple racks, giving teachers a raise. What Trump attempted to do, they plan to double that. And as far as the rich and poor with schools, the whole goal is to end the funding gap. That sounds legit. <laughs> yeah, that sounds legit. That sounds good. Yo. This shit was cringy. Yo, what the fuck? Are you serious? Yo, DNA, Charlie Clips, come on, man. I know you guys are monsters, but shit. Shit. First of all, I'm not gonna lie. These are professional battle rappers. The whole, when he, they were hitting punchlines, I said, mm, oh, this is, this is hard. But let's keep it real. The shit was cringy as fuck. The shit was cringy as fuck. All right. Talking about. L listen to what DNA said what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is going to do for the black community, right? B H H S uh, HBCUs, money for ownership, school, all of this other bullshit, right? This is what they're going to do for the black community. And you have native black people. ADUS, FBA, whichever, wanting reparations and they're completely ignoring them. Look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Biden is trying to get, trying to insult our intelligence. Getting with Cardi B and now this, bro, this is this right here is the hot um hot sauce in my purse uh, equivalency to what Hillary said. Jesus Christ. And at the end, at the end of that video, that shit was so oh. You see Joe Biden and Kamala Harris giving each other a dap. Come on, man. Like laughing. Like I can't believe they fell for it. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Are you serious? The shit was cringy, man. The shit was, first of all, the fact that DNA and Charlie Clips were at a basketball court. <laughs> that shit right there was a little, that's what I'm like, all right, all right, calm, relax. But all, all seriousness, all seriousness, that was cringy. That was cringy. That was disrespectful. That wasn't cool. That wasn't cute. That was insane. That was insane. I, I'm like, they want to lose on purpose. You know what I'm saying? And again, look what everything that DNA said. They try, first of all, uh, hold on. Let me just backtrack. They want to appeal to the black community so fucking bad because the black community for the first time is saying, fuck y'all, yeah, I'll vote. I'm not gonna give y'all shit. Are you stupid? Hell no, I'm not gonna give y'all shit. And they're looking at Trump, talking about we're not gonna give y'all shit either. You know what I'm saying? They're losing the voting block. That's why Biden said, well, we got Latin people. Shit, fuck the black folks. We got Latin people out here. You know what I mean? They're trying to use us as pawns to go against black folks so they can still lie to us too. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go 300 years voting Democrat? Come on, get out of here. 
So look at everything that uh, uh, DNA said to Charlie Cliffs because he did the research. This is, oh, this is what they're gonna do for the black community. But yet Ice Cube went up in there wanting to do something for the black community. He went to the Democrats and they said, wait, what? Wait, wait for what? Wait to win the campaign. That's your golden ticket. Fuck waiting. Yeah, let's talk about it. Draft up a plan. And I'll, if Joe Biden was smart, he will ride that golden ticket to the wheels fall off. He could have simply said, yo, we're going to do this for black Americans. I, I'm telling you right now, the next very day, his support from the black community will skyrocket. I'm telling you right now, he will have some black folks from Donald Trump's camp jump ship. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. So it seems like Joe Biden doesn't even want to win. It seems like this is a whole farce, can't, the, this whole farce because we all know Trump is going to win again. You know what I'm saying? It's like, didn't I even try to, you, you feel me? Like, come on, man. This is insane. Insane. So anyway, uh, Ice Cube puts out a pretend, a presents a plan and the Democrats said, wait, he's like, shit, let me go to Republicans. Republicans said, yo, let's talk. Everybody on Twitter went crazy. Ice Cube is a sellout. Ice Cube is a sellout. I can't believe this. Blah, blah, blah. Ice Cube is a sellout. What? Ice Cube is a sellout. I saw, I saw people say, you said fuck the police and now you work with police. Like, come on. Are you serious? Are you serious? He's putting up a plan to help the black community, regardless who it's coming from. He's going to go with it. This is business. This is chess, not checkers. This is business. Are y'all dumb? Why? Because I, I totally understanding. I get it. Trump is a racist. This motherfucker can't speak for shit. He basically looks at black people as just, um, wor working, uh, uh, just working slaves. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. But let's keep it real. If we can use a racist person's ego to benefit us, fuck it. Go right ahead. I'm not mad at y'all. Go right ahead. Because at the end of the day, the whole collective is going to win. Go right ahead. I'm not mad. Shout out to Ice Cube for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad. I am not mad whatsoever. Because Ice Cube is doing and is talking to the Republicans on, on something that's going to benefit everybody. And the Republicans are doing something that the Democrats are talking about doing or you know what I'm saying? Their, their coat is the Democrats coats is being pulled and they're being tested right now. The Democrats are failing. I'm telling y'all right now, if the Democrats don't shape up, even for the next four or eight years, the Democratic Party is going to get be lost. It's going to be lost from its um, turnout voter base. That is black folks. And I'm telling you right now, they're going to use Latin people as a scapegoat. You know what I'm saying? But because ice cube got so much backlash this is what ice cube had to say i want you guys to hear this well the platinum plan is not my plan i came up with the contract with black america um and i didn't run to go work with any campaign both campaigns contacted me both campaigns wanted to talk to me about the contract with black america one campaign said we love what you have, but let's really dig into it after the election. And one campaign said, we love what you have. Uh, what, do you mind talking to us about it? 
and that's what I did. So I didn't run to nobody, and uh, so that was real misleading to me. Um, well, I didn't say you ran you know, to anybody. I said that you had taken a pivot. Well, you, you, you said I ran over to the Trump team instead of the Biden team. That's just not true. Uh, well, but you are working with me. the Trump team instead of the Biden team, and people are giving you heat for it. What do you say to them? Well, I'm willing to work with both teams, but I'm just working with whoever is willing to work with me. So the Trump campaign came to me and asked me to explain to them some of the uh, contract with Black America. That's what I did. I'm not playing no more of these games, these political games. We're not part of a team. We have very broad problems, especially the wealth gap in this country when it comes to black Americans. So I'm going to whoever's in power and I'm going to speak to them about our problems specifically. I'm not going there talking about minorities. I'm not going there talking about people of color or diversity or none of that stuff. I'm going there for black Americans, the ones who are the descendants of slaves. And that's what I'm going to talk to anybody who's in power with that. So if anybody got a problem with that, it seems like a personal problem. Well said. Well said. Well spoken. I agree with him 100%. 100%. And he was staying on code throughout the whole thing. Yes, this is not about minorities. This is not about people of color. Because guess what? Politicians have been doing that from the very jump to divide us. Politicians have been doing that from the very jump to divide us. You know what I'm saying? So we're not doing that, you know, people of color bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's why with Latin folks, Latin people, politicians think that they could just get our vote by just talking about immigration rights. Immigration rights, this, this, and this, and this. Last time I checked, immigration rights isn't, it, well, immigration on, on itself isn't a Latin specific issue. Last time I checked, because there's white immigrants, there's black immigrants. There's a shitload of Asian immigrants too. So why not talk to them about the shit that really affects them? But no, they want to make it seem like Latin people are the invaders here. Even though some of us originated in this land. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. This is not me talking. This is history books. You feel me? This is history books. All right. So this is what, you know, this is the little mind games that they're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? These are the little mind games that they're trying to do. So we shouldn't, we should be calling them out on that. We should definitely be calling them out on that because that's not something that we should be allowing whatsoever. Because once we allow something like that, because listen, you know what we're allowing right now? We're allowing these people to relabel us. We're allowing these people to reclassify us. We're uh, allowing we're allowing these people to basically just tell us who we really are instead of us telling us who we really are. You know what I'm saying? That's what's happening right now. That's what's happening right now. And this has been happening from the very beginning. Reclassification. Reclassification. No, you're not Hispanic, you're Latin. No, you're not Latin, you're Latino. No, you're not Latino, you're Latinx. No, you're not Latinx, you're Latinx. Come on now. Come on now. Now we got little dumbass definitions of what Hispanic really is. It's somebody that speaks Spanish. And Latin is somebody from Latin, South, uh, South America, but not really. So Latin A is actually somebody underneath the water of South America. Come on, bro. What the fuck? Come on now, are you serious? And Latinx, what it really means is once you um, understand all the history of all the Latin people, you became, you get superpowers. Dude, what the fuck? Let's stop this bullshit. And I agree with Ice Cube 100%. If Trump is going to go and do something for the black community, go ahead. Why should we go against that? Go right ahead. By all means, more power to you. That's not something that we should be against. That's something that we should be encouraging. You know what I'm saying? That's something that we should definitely be encouraging because at the, you know, when we want our own shit, you know, 
and we have black and brown unity, guess what? Black folks is going to come in and boost up our numbers, and we need that. Because Latin people are politically lazy. Let's keep it real. Anyway, moving on to my next and final topic, which is the main topic. Christianity is a fake religion. Oh my God, Christianity. I can't believe you said it. I'm a thumbs down this video. Oh my God, fuck you, radical. Can't believe it. You said Christianity. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down, all right? Relax. Re fucking relax, okay? For researching for this uh, episode, I had to go back to my old research material and I end up finding out, I'm sorry, I ended up locating my old ass emails from 2013. Bullshit. No, I'm sorry. From 2008. Old ass emails from 2008, 2009 where when I finished doing the research of Christianity and what I believed in it and the things that I found for three months straight doing homework, just on my own, just doing homework, writing down notes or whatever, writing down papers, I found it and pretty much I'm going to sum it up. My life's work, I'm going to sum up in like 15 minutes. No, um, I'm going to sum up what I found pretty much for the sensitive people out there, this is my opinion based on the facts that I found. If you disagree with me, that is totally fine. That's on your own decor. That's cool. I don't need you to agree with me 100%. Don't worry about it. But this is just my opinion based on my facts that I found. You guys, to everything that I'm going to say, for here on out, you could go double check and see if it's right. That's it. See if it's right. Double check. See what I missed, what I didn't miss. If I missed the whole thing, let me know. All right. But go double check and see what's going on. Now, the way I always saw after I did my research. The way I saw Christianity was basically like a bullshit story. That's basically how I saw it. You know what I mean? You have to stand back in awe on how religion has been, you know, presented to us. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Religion has actually convinced people that there's an invisible man that lives in the sky and watches everything you do. That man has a list of 10 things you must not do. And if you do any of these things, he has a special place for you, full of fire, burning, torture, anguish, and he will send you there to live and suffer and cry for all eternity until the end of time. But he loves you. <laughs> he loves you. He loves you and he needs money. He's all powerful, all knowing, all wise, but for some reason can't handle money. Religion takes in billions and they pay zero in taxes and they always need more. Talk about a bull good bullshit story. And that's that shout out to George Carl uh, Carlin. Uh, that was one of his bits. I just loved it by the way. Shout out to George Carlin, but that's basically how I felt. That's basically how I felt that religion was the greatest bullshit story ever told based on my, again, research, based on what I found, based on what I discovered. And mind you, in multiple interviews, I even said the, re the way of my enlightenment was based on my mother telling me that Jesus was black. And I did not believe her. I said, the f what are you talking about? Yeah, he's black. Here's the verse. And then she went back. She went to cooking. You know what I'm saying? Which opened this whole Pandora box. I think she regrets it, but opened this whole Pandora box for me to research 
and find out all of this other stuff, which I'm going to present to you guys now. Now let's go thousands of years ago. The early base religions were nature based spiritual religions, right? It was a way of life, not a religion, religious practice, but a way to live by, you know, they weren't indoctrinated by this type of belief. It's just a way to live by a way to prosper. You know, these practices actually reach back all across the globe in civilizations where they connected in such different ways, like in Africa, where you see nature based religion artifacts practices and some tribes of people still practice it. You know what I'm saying? They build massive structures like pyramids all throughout Africa, not just Egypt, but all throughout Africa. Also in South America, which is very, very interesting because these nature based religions and practices were discovered and decoded in South America as well. And again, finding massive structures in these places that black and brown people occupy like pyramids in Mexico, Ecuador, Peru, Brazil. It's not a coincidence. Now to understand these religions, we need to go back and understand our ancestors and what they saw, what they discovered and put together as religious practices and the stories that they got from it. We have to go all the way, 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 way back. Now we have to go 10,000 BC, right? That's how far back we got to go. 10,000 BC. Let's look at the sun. We all know what the sun is. Let's look at the sun, right? Thousands upon thousands of cave carvings and paintings reflect people's respect and admiration for this object called the sun. It's simple to understand why every morning the sun comes up, brings warm security, health, saving us from the cold, dark night, right? This is what cultures understood. And these realities made the sun the most adored object of all time. Why the ancient cultures were very well aware of the stars and the tracking system of those stars, which allowed them to recognize and anticipate events, which occurred long periods ago throughout time, such as eclipses for moons. And they catalog all these celestial groups into what we call today constellations, right? If you look at a picture of a cross of the Zodiac based besides it being the oldest conceptual image in human history, you can actually look at it at my, at my Instagram. I posted it up a couple of days ago. No bullshit. I posted it up today. What am I talking about? It's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> I posted it up today. This is one of the oldest images of in human history. The Zodiac, the cross, or was it? The, cr uh, the, the cross of the Zodiac, you guys can even Google it, right? You could go to my Instagram and see it. It reflects the sun as it passes through this picture, right? It goes all around, right? It also reflects the 12 months in the year, four seasons and solaces and equinoxes, even though the Zodiac yeah, right? It also, even though it's a Zodiac, it also reflects the fact by this constellations of what they were anthropomorphized. Blah, 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 blah. They were anthropomorphic. They anthropomorphized these Zodiac symbols, right? As figures and animals. And they gave it background stories and different character traits, right? In other words, ancient civilizations didn't just follow the suns and the stars. They personify them. The sun was seen as the greater of all time. The greatest God son, the light of the world savior of humankind. This is what the sun represented to our ancient 
ancestors. Now, let's move forward in time to 3000 BC to Egypt. And let's look at the god Horus. If you Google Horus, H-O-R-U-S, Horus, you will see a bird face with a huge circle on top of his head with a snake, either a snake wrapped around the circle or not, either way, in a human body, right? The circle on his head represents the sun, all right? And that's why they gave him the sun. He was a sun god, right? His life was part of this like allegory of myth in involving the sun's movement in the sky. We know this because the hieroglyphics in the walls tells the story of Horus, right? It breaks everything down. Now, Horus had an enemy called Set, right? Sunset, get it? Sunset, Set. And the story goes that Set will win the battle against Horus, bringing darkness, bringing cold. And every morning, Horus will win the battle against Set, bringing the sunrise. Now, the story of Horus should be very similar to some Bible readers, if y'all can look it up yourselves. But this is how the story of Horus goes. Horus was born December 25th. He was born from a virgin, Isis Mary. The birth was, you know, consensualized from a star in the east. Three kings followed the star from the east to adorn the newborn savior. When Horus was 12 years old, he was a teacher. At 30, he was baptized. He also had 12 disciples, performed miracles, walked on water, turned or water into wine many names he had many names like the lamb of god king of kings uh a god's for only forgotten son blah 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 he was also crucified dead for three days and resurrected right after that sounds familiar doesn't it but it's not jesus it's horus you guys can go look it up now these similarities are not original or not seem to even be close close to even horus some have similarities some are just basically plagiarized you know what i'm saying but other gods all around different cultures around the world had the same story as, as horus and jesus that came before jesus and after horus right 80s of atis a t t i s from greece one um 1200 bc born december 25th virgin births crucified dead for three days resurrected krishna india 900 bc virgin birth st a star from the east it, he also did um, a lot of miracles dead for three days resurrected Dionysus from Greece, 500 BC, virgin birth, born on December 25th. Miracles with water and wine, walking on water, resurrected after three days. Mithra from Persia, 1200 BC, virgin birth, born December 25th. 12 disciples performed miracles, died for, for, for three days, resurrected. And this is the funny part. The day to worship Mithra from Persia was Sunday. A day of worship for Mithra. Isn't that interesting? Doesn't that sound familiar? Now, these are just a few facts and few small little facts of different gods with some similarities, right? These gods were made all over the world in different times, but they all share the same common characteristics. You have to question why. Why do they share the same common characteristics? You're just gonna have to question it, right? Why, 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 why? I'm here to answer it, right? Now let's look at Jesus, right? Jesus, the most modern God and deity that we have. Born December 25th, virgin birth, 
of Mary, born in a conceptual way by a war. Actually, the, the birth was worn by the star of the East. Three kings followed to adorn the born savior, was a teacher at 12, baptized at 30, 12 disciples, performed miracles, walked on water, many names again, Lamb of God, Son of Son, King of Kings and everything, crucified, died for three days of resurrected after. Now the first start, the 25th, the virgin birth, star in the east and followed by three kings. Those, one, two, three, four, five, those five things right there, that sequence is completely astrological. It's completely astrological. And again, you guys can go check this out and, and, and see it completely astrological. The star in the east is Cyrus, the brightest star in the night sky, which in December 24th aligns with the brightest star in Orion's belt. These three bright stars on Orion's belt are called today what they were called many years ago, the three kings. The three kings are the brightest star in Cyrus, all point to the place of the sunrise on December 25th. This is why the three kings follow the star in the east in order to um, locate the sunrise of the birth of the sun. You guys get it? On December 24th, the brightest star on the night sky aligns with Orion's belt, the three, the three, uh, the three stars, which all align to the sunrise where it's gonna, where the sun is gonna, you know, come up. That that's uh, that should be blowing your minds right now, completely off. I'm telling you, go look it up. Mary is also a constellation, Virgo, also known as you know the Virgin of Virgo. In Latin, means virgin. It, the ancient glyph of Virgo is an altered M, and this is why Mary, along with other virgin mothers, such as at Adasi's mother Mithra and Buddha's mother Maya begin with M. Virgo is also referred to the house of bread. In representation of Virgo is the virgin holding a sheaf of wheat. If you guys all, all see different drawings of what Virgo is, is a woman holding either wheat or, or bread or whatever the case is, but those wheats is, you know, for bread. This house of bread and symbol of wheat represents August and September, the time of harvest. Also, Bethlehem, in fact, literally translates to house of bread. Bethlehem is thus referenced in the constellations of Virgo and takes place in the sky, not on earth. Bethlehem was never a place was never placed whatsoever. Now there's another very interesting phenomenon that also occurs around December 25th in the winter solstice in the summer. So in the winter solstice in the summer solstice, the winter solstice, right? The days for summer becomes longer, right? And the winter becomes shorter, right? The days become shorter for the winter solstice become shorter and colder, shorter and colder, shorter and colder from a perspective of the Northern hemisphere, the sun appears to be moving south and gets smaller and smaller and smaller and more scarce, more scarce, more scarce, which means the, the coming days is approaching of winter. Winter solstice symbolizes the process of death. It was always the death of the sun on December 25th. The sun becomes and comes out at the lowest point in the sky here. A curious thing occurs, something very curious, right? The sun stops moving south, at least perceivably for three days. During these days that pass, the sun stays still. And on the third day, it rises one degree up. And this is called the, cr the cross or the crux constellation. Look that up. After, after December 25th, after December 25th, the sun moves one degree north and it moves up, perceiving longer days, warm, 
warmth and spring to come. And as so is said, the son died at the cross, was dead for three days, and then resurrected again to be born again. This is why Jesus and numerous other gods shared the same conflicting and similar three-day death resurrection concept. It's actually the sun. The sun is, ba is, is just basically a translation for it. That's all it is, you know? But the resurrection of the sun isn't create, you know, something celebrated either, right? The, the resurrection of the sun, I'm sorry, isn't just celebrated until Easter. The resurrection of the sun is celebrated in Easter for the spring equinox. This becomes the sun that overpowers the nights to bring longer days. Now, everybody that wonders why Easter happened and why for, for Jesus or whatever the case is, no, is for celebration of the sun. This is what the ancient people believe. Now, the 12 disciples represented in the zodiac sign, which the sun God travels through and stays in the middle. If you guys see, again, the picture in my Instagram, if you guys see it, the sun stays in the middle, right? If you guys go to the next photo, you'll see a cross with a circle around it. You will see that same symbol everywhere throughout Christianity. All right. You see the same thing throughout Christianity all the time. This is another astrological allegory. That's all it is. The cross is a pagan symbol adopted of the cross of the Zodiac. That cross with the circle shown the writing depicts all over the artwork and even depicts it around Jesus's face. If you see some paintings of Jesus, you see a huge circle around him. Come on, come on. You know what I'm saying? Now, going back to Horus, in the walls, they even show everything that happened to Jesus basically happened to Horus from birth all the way to death. In fact, the similarities between Egyptian religion and Christianity is staggering. It's staggering. The, the, basically this is all plagiarism. The play, the plagiarism is insane. The stories were basically ripped off the walls of Egypt and st basically stolen. Like some stories, like, let me give you an example, like Noah from the ark and Moses, even from the 10 commandments were taken straight from the book of dead from, of the book of the dead from Egypt. The Noah's ark, that's not an original story. Moses, that's not original. That's not an original story either. Now there was numerous historians who lived around the Mediterranean during that time, even before, during or after, and not one person, not one person ever documented the existence of Jesus. You guys have to think about that. If a person is walking around performing miracles, um, healing the blind, Curing people from leprosy. Leprosy at that time was a coronavirus of today. You know what I'm saying? Curing people from leprosy and all this other stuff. You don't think somebody would have documented that by now? You know what I'm saying? Other ancient civilization documented when the world was about to end, but they couldn't document that? Come on now. Even if they had phones back then, that shit would be on World Star in less than 24 hours. Somebody just walking around in, in water? Come on now. Turning water into Henny? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on. Now, most people, most people point to three people, right? Who talk about Jesus. So they, talk, uh, they point to three people say, see, they actually talk about Jesus. And the, wor and the writing that they use is, Christus and Christ, which is a title, not a name. And that is easily debunked. And there are very a small, even uh, there's, there's small mentions of that, you know? And that's a title, not a name. Basically the title was the anointed one. It wasn't a person. You know what I'm saying? They gave that many titles to many different people. There's only one person that a lot of Christians like to point to 
saying that, see, this is a historian. They, uh, you know, they pointed, uh, they could, you know, he, he wrote for, you know, he said that he saw Jesus or whatever the case is. They like to point to that person. But the thing is that that person has been proven, his works has been proven to be for, um, for, forgeries. Basically a bunch of fakes. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of fakes. But anyway, now fast forward, right? Fast forward to modern ancient slavery times, right? When you want to control a people, when you want to control a group spiritually or militarily, you have to control their mind first. And by controlling their mind, you have to pre uh, present a false image of something that they have to look forward to. What kind of false image would that be? A deity, a, a you know, yourself, whatever. But when you present this false image, it has to reflect back to you so psychologically you'll start seeing your oppressor in that false image right now mind you these stories from egypt and all over with krishna india and all these other stuff were just stories nothing to practice and and really believe and I got to pray to this person. No, it wasn't even like that. It was stories to feel good about yourself, to live by saying, this is what this is, you know, this is good. We should live by this. You know, um, this person did this, well, let's try to replicate it, but then live your life as normal is not to be indoctrinated on these stories. It wasn't until Constantine came up with the idea of controlling people with religion, because back then the different uh, conquered occupied people like black and Latin people all outside of Europe had our own thing going on. Our own religion ha had our own language, had our own practices. And the majority of the practices were practicing this you know, nature-based religion. This is what most of us were, most of our ancestors were practicing. The thing is, once Constantine presented this as a 100% fact, it was easy for us to adopt because some of the practices were already similar, but now we're being confused, like saying, wait a minute, this is fact, this is 100% real? You know, so Constantine went out and pitched this idea around, right? And someone told Constantine that that's the craziest thing they ever heard. No one is going to believe that story. It, it's a good moral story to live by, but to believe it, it's, it's insane. You know what I'm saying? It's insane. You don't, you're not supposed to live by that. You know, I mean, you're not supposed to like follow it religiously. So Constantine didn't care and went forth with his plan. So the temple of Jesus, the, the first of all, the temple. Uh, so he needed to come out with the name of Jesus. How can we come this out? How can, so they combine two names, Hesos, H-E-S-O-S. The sun god and Christos, another sun god, K R I S T O S. Funny thing is, Jesus and Christos, you put it together, and in Spanish it says Jesucristo. Jesucristo. Isn't that interesting? Jesucristo, Jesus and Christos. Jesucristo. Look this up. They combined the two names and now they needed a image. They needed the image to go with the new name. What they ended up doing was getting the image from this man named Apollonius from Titan 
or from um i believe was it from tyana i'm sorry titans tyana apollonius from tyana he was a healer a teacher and he performed what they call certain miracles right so they use that image of apollonius it's spelled a p o l l o n i u s they took his image and modernized Jesus. Now they have the name and now they have the image. Mind you, the letter J did not come until later on until they had to refine it. But this is basically the whole argument and the whole proof that Christianity is a fake religion, is a plagiarized religion from Egypt, and it was further used to control us by made up names and made up images by our oppressors to use against us. And some of us are so blind that we we'll go along with the bullshit. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that some shit? I'm telling you, you guys could research this whole thing. I'm telling you right now. Everything from the Bible is all astrological. The 12 disciples are the 12 zodiac signs. The sun God is the sun. The star in the east and the three kings are the stars. All of this were stories told in different variations from generations to generations to generations, but wasn't used to indoctrinate. It was a moral story to live by. That's it. That's it. It's like, it's like little, little, you know, uh, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, you know, stories like that. You learn the lesson from it. Okay. That's it. Imagine 3000 years from now, somebody says, Hey, I'm going to use the Humpty Dumpty story and I'm going to make it a whole religion. And I'm going to use, you know, a name, put it together and rename the, um, re redo the image. And now people are going to believe that. You know what I'm saying? It's a made up story. This is something we have to be real about. We have to be real about, you know, part of our empowerment is to escape the chains that we have inside our brain. And part of this escapement is what I'm presenting to you guys now, you know, but anyway, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you want to donate to your boy, um, please do so. Cash app, dollar sign, Radical Latino. Go to my web or go to my website, RadicalLatino.com. Donate, whichever, whatever you guys want to do. If you want to, you know, contribute monetarily. If you don't, go to my YouTube. I'm monetized. Watch a video. That's totally fine. They give me a kickback. Or rate this podcast five stars, please, 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 please. The more five stars I get, the better I'll do on the algorithm. Um, remember, if you guys want to hit me up on Instagram and Twitter at the same name, radical underscore Latino underscore. You guys can hit me up. I'll answer back. I'm not that famous. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and before I go out, I'm going to close off with the same thing. I always close off. I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. With that being said, I'm going to catch y'all later. All right. Peace.